27th meeting of the Pocosin City School Board. Uh, Mr. Brendan Smith will introduce our pledge leader. Brody is a fourth grader in Mrs. Stanish's class at PES. His favorite subject is math and he says it comes easy to him. He is enjoying the multi-digit multiplication he is doing right now. Brody is quite the sports enthusiast, playing basketball, little league baseball, and travel baseball. In his spare time, he likes to play video games. When asked what he might like to do after high school, he shared he would like to be a professional baseball player because he can play many positions and currently enjoys the position of catcher the most. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States it's of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ashley is a fifth grader in Mrs. Haas's and Mrs. Kyle's fifth grade classes. Her favorite subject is reading, and she loves reading mystery and fantasy novels. She plays travel soccer and volleyball as part of the Pocosin Parks and Recreation League. One day, Ashley wants to be a designer where she would paint a design that would later become a fabric print used for posters, clothing, <clears throat> excuse me, and other decorative articles. Ashley will be reading an essay she composed titled, Why I Love PES. Hi, my name is Ashley Groseth, and I go to Pocosin Elementary School. I am one of the five SCA leaders of the school and love being a part of the fun activities. This year is off to a great start, and I can tell that the third graders, after transferring to a new school, are starting to love the new school, too. One of the things I love about PES is that we do fundraisers. Over the recent years, two of the most well-known fundraisers are Jump Rope for Heart and Box Stops. Jump Rope for Heart is where we raise money by jump roping and send it off to, to spend, <laughs> send the money off to hospitals to help kids who are fighting for their lives. Box tops can be found on items such as cereal boxes, snack boxes, and much more. For every 10 you collect, you raise a dollar for the school. We just recently finished a fundraiser called Race Craze, where we raised money by completing acts of kindness for other people, while at the same time achieving the ultimate goal of helping those in need. I think it is great how PES provides clubs. Many of these clubs are super fun, and when a club is going to happen that day, I can tell everyone is excited to stay and work hard. I have not done all of these clubs, but I am familiar with STEM Club. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, and I am pleased to say I can clearly recognize the usage of all four of those. The clubs are super fun, and I enjoy creating new and fun things. Though I've never tried ecology or running club, I'm sure most of the kids agree or feel the same way. I also want to talk about the Bulls Don't Bully Club. It is not only fun, but people should be proud when they put on the Bulls Don't Bully shirt because it represents kindness and the respect they show for other people. PES is well known for saying the saying, Bulls Don't Bully. Just saying those words makes me think of how much kinder people can get for by at one act of kindness. I lastly want to talk about the amazing teachers in PES. All of the teachers are super nice, and they make us our first, their first priority because when they walk into the building, they think of us and how they can make us successful. They, they help us make sure that we are doing our work and using our time wisely. They are the foundation of PES that makes it a wonderful place to learn and grow. The teachers do fun projects with us and get to know us super well and push us to become better at what we are weakest at. Overall, PES is an extraordinary school that I'm not ready to leave. <laughs> Well done, Ashley. Thank you very much. So tonight, we have the staff and students from Precocin Elementary School who will share about the school-wide positive behavioral intervention and support that happens at Precocin Elementary School. Staff will share what the components of the program are, and students will share how the school-wide program impacts their daily learning and activities. So presenting tonight are Carolyn Harper, Ronan 
Renalone Mims, Isaac Studd, and Reed Booth. And our faculty are Miss LaRue, Mrs. Frisbee, and Mrs. Kaysen. All right, good evening. So last year, Pocosin Elementary School developed and implemented a positive behavioral <coughs> intervention and support system, also known as PBIS. And PBIS is a framework that identifies and supports desired behaviors in the school setting. It seeks to reduce or eliminate poor behaviors by encouraging the desired or expected behaviors in a positive way. So it's ultimately proactive and preventative in its approach to school-wide discipline. So tonight we would like to take you through exactly how we created and executed the system in our school. So the first step in the process was to establish what our school-wide expectations would even be. So we did this as a faculty, brainstorming the various qualities and or characteristics that a successful student typically demonstrates. And then we categorized them and grouped these qualities until we were left with three overarching themes, which were respect, responsibility, and resourcefulness. So these became our new school-wide expectations. And they fit seamlessly into a pledge that our students have been reciting every morning for the past 15 years, which was actually written by a PES student back in the 90s. So one of our fifth graders, Ronan Ranalone Mims, will now recite this pledge for you. We, the students of Pocosin Elementary School, pledge to learn and live the three R's. We will respect all adults and fellow students. We will be responsible for our assignments and our actions. We will use our resourcefulness to get the job done. We will follow the three R's, respect, responsibility, and resourcefulness. We say this pledge every day to remind us of the expectations of us at school. The pledge is good for, for us to say because it encourages us to remember what we need to do every day and live up to those standards throughout our life. Thank you, Ronan. So after we established our school-wide expectations, we then had to define what these expectations should look like across <coughs> the different locations in our school, not just in the classrooms. We chose clear and observable behaviors. The picture on the slide is of the matrix that we created that lists the expectations and their defined behaviors within each of our school's locations. And we flanked the matrix with the four Oveus rules that were already prominent in our school. So once we established our school-wide expectations and defined the specific behaviors, the next step was to explicitly teach them to our students. So one of our fourth grade teachers, Mrs. Valerie Frisbee, will now explain a little more about how we taught these expectations in our school. So to kind of piggyback off of what Mrs. LaRue said, um, what we did as a staff, I kind of did with my class at the beginning of the year. I spent a lot of time in morning meetings for like the first month of school talking about what respect means. Because if you ask a student, um, what respect is. A lot of the time they have a difficult time giving you a definition and so we spend a lot of time talking about what it looks like, what it sounds like, and responsibility. Same with responsibility and resourcefulness. Um, and I didn't even show this to my students at the beginning of the year. We just talked about what we thought it meant and what it should look like around the school and kind of created our own and compared it to this to see um, how they were similar and how they were different and if we could add anything else on. And I look for any opportunity, and I know other teachers at PES look for any opportunity to reinforce these throughout the day, throughout the year, and um, really drive them home. Thank you, Mrs. Frisbee. <coughs> so once our school-wide expectations were clearly taught and explained to our students, the next step was to develop a way to positively reinforce classes who demonstrated these expected behaviors. So each class has the ability to earn bull bucks or bull coins, which you see displayed on the screen. They earn these for displaying respect, responsibility, and or resourcefulness throughout the school. 
For example, if a class is seen walking through the hallways in an SOS line, which is straight, orderly, and silent, then any staff member can award them with a bull buck. Similarly, a class can earn a bull buck by following the three R's in their encore classes or in the cafeteria, basically any of those locations where we establish those defined behaviors. And for every 50 bull bucks that a class earns, they earn rewards and recognition one of which is a larger bull buck that represents which increment they've reached. And this bull buck is then displayed outside their classroom on their bullseye for everyone to see. In addition to the larger incremental bull buck, each class gets their picture taken and placed on a bulletin board. And finally, classes then get to vote on a reward. And this year, our staff created a menu for which classes can choose their rewards. And the rewards increase in value as the increment increases. So now one of our fifth graders, Caroline Harper, will tell you a bit more about earning bull bucks and bull coins. Hi, my name is Caroline Harper and I'm a student here at Pocosin Elementary School and I'm in Mr. Jones and Ms. Kyle's Tagamet Express classes. In our school, we do bull bucks, which are rewards we can get in the hallways, at lunch, during encore, etc. You can earn fun prizes from these bull bucks, such as extra recess, movie and PJ day, so on and so forth. Just the other day, my class, Mooney Mr. Jones class, earned 15 minutes of extra recess. My class has earned approximately 135 bull bucks. I can't wait until our next bull buck party. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. So next, our assistant principal, Mrs. Ruth Marie Kaysen, she will tell you about a new addition to our PBIS system. Good evening. So another component to our positive behavior intervention system is brand new this year, and that's the positive office referral. Just as we are recognizing classes who meet school-wide behavioral expectations with the Bull Bucks, we're now recognizing individual students who meet those same expectations with a positive office referral. Students who earn a positive office referral demonstrate how they individually are meeting or exceeding the expectations for behavior by following the three R's. Again, respect, responsibility, and resourcefulness. When they're sent to the office with a referral, they are met by either Dr. Wood or myself. We sign their certificate, take a picture, which is then tweeted out and emailed to the parents, and we also make a positive parent phone call home. Of course, that's always the fun one when we start. This is Mrs. Kaysen, the assistant principal from the elementary school. It's not an emergency. I did see Isaac in the office today, but it's for a positive office referral. <laughs> We do have tonight two recent recipients of a positive office referral, Isaac Mitchell and Sophia Studd, and so they'll each share a little bit about their recognition. Hi, my name is Isaac Mitchell, and I am a fourth grader in Mrs. Burnick's class. One day I came into class and got unpacked and made a lunch choice and went to my seat to get ready to begin the day at school. My teacher wrote in my agenda that I did a great job she, and she gave me a positive office referral that I took to the office and had my picture taken with Dr. Wood. Hello, my name is Sophia Studd and I am a fourth grader in Miss Knight's class. Well, kids in my class would always leave things everywhere and I would feel bad for the cleaning lady because there would be papers, pencils, glue sticks, and scissors all over the floor. When I saw that all over the floor, I would pick all of it up and sweep the area there or around it. I would see Chromebooks unplugged and on desks. So I would pick them up and put them neatly in the Chrome cart and plug them in how they are supposed to be. I like that things are neat and in its place so the teacher does not have to do it. 
Also, I think that helping the teacher is the right thing to do. I was surprised when the teacher said that I got one because I did not think that she noticed me or that it mattered. I felt like my mom would be proud of me and that I was so happy and excited that I got a positive office referral. All right. So this year, we are striving to go above and beyond the three R's. We want to encourage our students not just to be respectful, <coughs> responsible, and resourceful, but we want them to be kind. Our goal is to create, to create a climate of kindness throughout PES. Our goals don't bully, that Ashley mentioned earlier, meets monthly to complete different school-wide activities and projects that promote kindness. And as well, as Ashley mentioned, we had the fundraiser kickoff called Raise Craze that our PTO <coughs> led, which really challenged our students to perform random acts of kindness throughout our school and our community. And as you can see on the slide, some of our classes, some of the acts that we had were presentations of letters of appreciation to our office staff and to our night custodians. We had some classes who wrote inspirational messages on post-it notes and placed them around the school to be found by other students. And the PTO arranged for some of our Pocosin police officers to welcome the students to school one day with high fives. So PES really plans to springboard off of this kindness surge within our school and continue to build that culture of kindness. So now one of our fifth graders, Reed Booth, <coughs> will share an essay that he wrote during the division-wide kindness week about what kindness means to him. What kindness means to me? I think that kindness is the thing that makes you wake up in the morning with a smile. I think that kindness is the thing that makes you hope that new kid with his homework. I think that kindness is what wills you to be the best person you can be. Kindness is what makes the world go round. Without kindness, we would just be fighting in a gray world. One time, the second grader told me what to do when I was in kindergarten on the first day of school. It made me feel so good that this stranger wanted to help me. It just made my day. I always think of that day when I am being kind to someone else. For example, I was helping my mom take in the groceries and I thought back to kindergarten and realized that I must have felt how they felt when they were helping me. It felt like nothing could stop you. Every day I try and do as many acts of kindness as I can. Today, there were some new kids in our class who were from another class whose teacher was not there and they did not have a substitute teacher. I recognized one of them from my swim team and I said hello when they came in this morning. Later at recess, I played with him because it looked as if he had nobody to play with. While I was playing with him, I found out that no, not only was I making him happy, I was making myself happy as well. I believe that if everyone did 10 acts of kindness every day, the world would be awesome. Excellent. Thank you so much, Reed. And thank you all for allowing us this opportunity to present and share a little bit about PBIS at PES. And thank you all for everything you do for our schools. Thank you, and I really appreciate all of your <coughs> comments. Uh, I'm hoping that you guys will stay for a little bit longer. We just have some recognitions to give, and then we want to break and meet with you. Perfect. That be okay? Is that okay with parents? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Okay, so do we have any additions or modifications to the agenda? We do not this evening. All right, so let's move on to recognitions. Thank you, and why um, Mrs. Sheeler is making it down to do our presentations, we've got um, a lot of family in the audience. I do want to let you know that we do record this, and so it will be connected to the division website, so you could send the link to families across the world if you want. It'll take us about a week to get it linked up, but I did want you to know that, that we have that. So what I'd like to do is to move on to our first recognition of the evening, and that is for the um, Pocosin Elementary School Volunteer of the Month. So if Sheena Booth could please come forward.
Sheena has one son, Reed, who is a fifth grader at Pocosin Elementary School. Sheena has held leadership positions on the PPS and now the PES PTO board. At the primary school, she held the offices of secretary and president. At the elementary school, she has held the office of secretary and is currently the fundraising coordinator and social media coordinator. Sheena has a very positive can-do attitude, and when she says she will take care of something, it is done immediately and done very well. This year, Sheena organized a very successful new fundraiser called Raise Craze, which we heard spoken about in the presentation, which focused on acts of kindness by students for others at school and in the community. We thank her for her time and kindness that she gives to all of the Pocosin Elementary School staff, students, and their families. Please join me in congratulating Sheena Booth for being the volunteer of the <coughs> month. I'd now like to recognize the senior of the month and ask that Cindy Hong come forward, please. Cindy is an outstanding student at PHS and the Governor School for Science and Technology, as well as being very involved in the life of Pocosin High School. She is a member of the varsity tennis and cross country teams and has also held a leadership role in the Student Council Association as both secretary and president. Cindy is currently secretary of Key Club, National Honor Society, and Mu Alpha Theta. She is a member of the Science Honor Society, Spanish Honor Society, Environmental Club, Help Save the Next Girl, Save the Bees, and the Ping Pong Club. This hardworking and well-spoken individual is always willing to help when asked. After graduating, Cindy hopes to attend UVA and major in accounting or chemistry. Please join me in congratulating Cindy Wong as the November Student of the Month. <laughs> Next, I'd like to invite um, our golf team to come forward so we can recognize them for their accomplishments. So we need Josh Brown. Anna Trombetta, Nicole Trombetta, Lane Seeley, Drew Parr. Kyle Jackson. Okay, thanks. <laughs> and I'll now call up the voice from the back of the room, Coach Bowden. <laughs> about the team. The 2018 PHS golf team had another outstanding season. The team finished second in the district by only one stroke to the 4A state champions, Jamestown High School. They won their second straight regional championship with a come from behind victory over <coughs> Maggie Walker and finished third in the state championship. The team was led by Josh Brown who had a 74 average in district play and was third in the district overall. Nicole Trombetta also had an outstanding year with an overall average around 80. She was also in the top 10 individuals in the district. Sophomore Brianna Trombetta also had a very good year and led the Islanders in the regional tournament with a 78. Juniors Lane Seeley and Drew Parr both averaged around an 82 for the year and were very consistent all year long. Kyle Jackson also had a great season playing the sixth spot and helping us defeat Jamestown on their home course early in the season. Josh Brown, Nicole Trombetta, and Kyle Jackson have been a part of a conference championship, a district championship, two regional championships, and a second and third place in the state championships. They have helped to take the Pocosin golf team to a very high level over the past three years. The team returns three outstanding golfers next year to continue their great success. Brianna Trombetta, Drew Parr, and Lane Seeley have a great chance to lead the Islanders back to the state tournament next year. Please join me in congratulating the PHS golf team on their great season and finishing third in the state.
Thank you. I'm now going to invite the varsity field hockey players to come forward. Sydney Baggett. <coughs> Skylar Brown. Abby Canella. Martha Chiapese. Maddie Duncan. Maria Galacka. Sorry, I don't think I had that quite right. <laughs> Not here. Samantha Grimes. Shelby Grizzard. Elizabeth Johnson. Samantha Johnson. Lolly Maturano. Eileen Patton. Karen Rollins. And Gwen Wood. And I'd also like to invite our coaches to come forward, Darcy Chavezzi, the head coach, and assistant coaches Dale Ames and Ellie Staples. The 2018-2019 Procosan Varsity Field Hockey Team finished <coughs> the season as the Bay Rivers District Champions Class 1 through 3A regional champions, and Class 1 through 3A state runner-up. The season ended with an 18 to 3 record. The offensive team had 302 shots on goal, scoring a total of 76 goals and earning 209 offensive corners. There were 12 different players who contributed to this achievement. The defensive team had 14 shutouts, blocked 78 shots on goal, and defended 68 corners. As you can see, see, field hockey is truly a team with together everyone achieving more. Congratulations to the following ladies for being selected on either the all-region team, all-state team, or both. The all-region team, Sydney Baggett, Abby Barefoot, Skylar Brown, Abby Canella, Martha Giapese, Maddie Duncan, Samantha Grimes, Elizabeth Johnson, Samantha Johnson, Aaron Wallins, Rollins, and Gwen Wood. On the All-State team, Skylar Brown, Martha Chiapese, Samantha Grimes, Samantha Johnson, and Aaron Rollins. Please join me in congratulating our outstanding field hockey plays, players for their success in the state, coming second in the state. Why they're doing this picture, do know that we are losing three seniors for next season, Martha Giapese, Elizabeth Johnson, and Erin Rollins. So many of these girls will be with us next year. I would ask that um, Mrs. Um, Giapese Come back up. We are very excited to recognize Ms. Darcy Chiapese for her selection as the Virginia High School League Class 3 Field Hockey Coach of the Year. Selected by her peers for her commitment to the success and character of student athletes, 
Coach Giapese is honored as the most outstanding coach from the schools in classes one through three across the entire state. Coach Giapese has 21 years of coaching experience in the sport of field hockey with time spent at CNU and in Newport News Public Schools. She began her coaching career at Bercosan High School in 2008 as a junior varsity coach and then transitioned to the varsity head, co head coach in 2012. This year, she coached the Bercosan High School field hockey team to the state finals. In addition to her role as a PHS field hockey coach, Ms. Gia Pazzi serves as a physical education teacher at Bercosan Elementary School, the assistant swim coach for PHS, and the assistant athletic director for PHS. Please join me in congratulating Ms. Gia Pazzi on being named VHSL Class 3 Coach of the Year. And now we'd like to, uh, let's see. Yes, now we'd like to have a break and meet with you all. <laughs> that was the famous neighborhood. I'll tell you right now, we're staying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank
Well, all right, let's start this meeting again. Uh, next up is Ms. Woodruff with the financial update. Good evening, Vice Chair Sheeler, members of the school board, and Dr. Parrish. For the finance report this evening, I wanted to review the budget calendar for the upcoming fiscal year 2020 budget process. Between December and March, we will hold meetings with the PCPS Benefits Committee to discuss division benefits as they relate to the budget. We anticipate that the release of the governor's budget proposal will be on December 17th, However, we will not receive the Virginia Department of Education Calc tool at that time, which outlines the state funding for school divisions. This is usually published after the release of the governor's budget, which means that we may not know what the governor's budget means for PCPS until sometime in January. On January 9th, the General Assembly begins. FY20 is the second year of the biennium, so this year will be the shorter session that should end in February. We will hold a public budget public forum with the school board on January 29th, which is an opportunity for the community to provide input on the budget. And during January through March, the school board will receive budget updates and discussions will be held at the work sessions. On March 19th, Dr. Parrish will present the proposed budget at the school board work session. And on March 26th, the school board will need to hold a special meeting for a public hearing on the proposed budget. There will be a work session afterward if needed. The school board can decide to take a vote on budget approval at this meeting if desired. If it is not approved at that meeting, um, the school board will need to hold another meeting on March 28th for budget approval, so we may forward the school board approved budget to the city by the end of March. <clears throat> there are multiple opportunities for the community to provide input on the budget. The superintendent seeks faculty and staff input on the budget. Parents and community members are encouraged to attend the public forum and the public hearing. Input can also be provided through Let's Talk, which can be accessed through the PCPS website. And additionally, you may contact the superintendent by calling, visiting, or sending an email. And we appreciate your input and continued support. And that concludes my report for this evening. Thank you, Ms. Woodruff. Uh, any questions, comments? very much. Uh, Mr. Pappas, would you come forward with the operations update? Good evening, Vice Chairperson Sheeler, School Board, and Dr. Parrish. This evening, uh, I'd like to start off by saying that, as is our tradition, parents of the primary and elementary school students had an opportunity to invite their parents and or guardians to join us for the Thanksgiving festivities that uh, we did last week. And this year we had 306 parents at the primary school and 199 at the elementary school. Everyone had a lovely time. Under this evening's consent agenda, you'll notice that there's a request to expend reappropriated funds from the city. Uh, the majority of those funds will be spent creating two new vestibules <coughs> at the high school main entrance and at the primary school. That'll give us four vestibules. These two would be similar then in nature to the ones that are currently at the elementary school <coughs> and middle school. The work on the vestibules will likely be done when school ends in June. Additional funds in that reappropriation request will go to supplant our requirement for matching funds for the state security grant that we got this year. So when the vestibules are done, we will create double door entrances at the main entrance of the high school and the primary school, just like we have at the other schools. And that concludes my report this evening. Thank you, Mr. Pappas. Any questions or comments? Yes, one. So another glass structure on the outside for entry? Yes. Is that what we're doing? Okay. Right. So <clears throat> that'll create a void, if you will, in the center. So you buzz through, you come to the center, you vet it, and then you go into the building. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Pappas, um, are there, are there going to be two buzzers? They go into one and they wait? Well, if, you, if you're an employee, you'll buzz 
coming straight in from the front door, but if someone were to follow you, they would be stopped on the inside. They would be vetted. <coughs> There's no requirement for anybody to meet you at that, at that point. The person would go to the office. No, the, I'm going to interrupt. We're sure. um, we're working through how we might staff that entrance because the way um, the vestibules are set up at the primary school, I mean at the elementary school, middle school, you walk in the first, you do walk in the first door. You're not buzzed in, but you can't go through the next door until you've talked to the individual on the right there on the side. So we're, as we design those vestibules, we're going to have to look to see how, what can we do. So Actually, staff somebody say, "Mirror, there's where they come in. They talk to some rather than just talking through a camera like they do now, and then get let in the second door." So um, we've got some time to work through that because we won't don't want to bring that kind of construction into the building. We've got students in the building, especially because it's at the main entrance, so it would be a little bit <laughs> as we're constructing it. Thank you, Mr. Pappas. Yes, Dr. Fox, can we get an instructional update, please? Yes, good evening, Vice Chair Sheeler, members of the board, and Dr. Parrish. My instructional update this evening continues our fall data review to include advanced placement and scholastic aptitude test data. So in 2017 and 18, Pocosin High School students took 23 different AP courses and completed 265 AP exams. These AP courses were taught at Pocosin High School, the Governor's School, or through online vir the Virtual Virginia program. <clears throat> Excuse me. These courses are weighted college level courses and students choose whether or not to take the exam at the end of the course. At Pocosin High School, 73% of the AP exams that were taken this past year received a score of three or higher. At the state level, this percentage was 69% and globally it was 61%. Our students continue <coughs> to outpace their counterparts at the state and the global level. Students who take and pass an AP course and score a three or higher on an AP exam may receive college placement at a higher entry level and or in some cases may also receive full credit for that college course. I also wanted to share with you data about the seniors from Pocosin High School who took the SAT this past year. The 2018 data represents the second year of the new SAT test which was given in the beginning of March of 2016. The change to the SAT made the writing portion optional for students, with the evidence-based reading and writing portion and the math portion required for all students. Students can score between a 400 and a 1600 on the new SAT, which is 200 to 800 points per section. Currently, our students are scoring above the state and national averages, and we saw an increase of the overall score of 29 points from 2017 to 2018. And finally tonight, I wanted to share with you on Thursday, November 15th, we had a lot of fun at Pocosin Primary School for our first annual K-12 STEM night. Um, thank you to Mrs. Molly Reiser, our STEM grant project director, and all of our teachers, students, parents, and staff who assisted with the evening. Students, parents, and guests were programming and coding. They were landing airplanes with a flight simulator. They were building structures from spaghetti and marshmallow, marshmallows, watching demonstrations from mad science, tasting ice cream made from wacky things such as mashed potatoes and gravy, which believe it or not was pretty good. Um, they were viewing <laughs> projects such as color chalk surveys, storybook stem, build a board, and this is not a box. A highlight of the evening was making your hair stand on end using a Van de Graaff generator. So it was a lot of fun that evening. Um, and that concludes my report this evening. Thank you, Dr. Fox. Are there any comments, questions, anything? <laughs> Thank Thanks you so much. Um, moving on to public comments, Ms. Reimers, are there any cards? Right. Uh, let's move on to the consent agenda. Mr. Michael Troutman will lead us through that. The agenda is for approval of the financial reports, approval to accept the change of appropriation, and to accept the and to spend funds in accordance with the attached requests, the approval of personnel action. The approval of minutes of October's regular meeting and the work session, approval of certification of closed meeting on October 16th, <clears throat> authorization to dispose the, of surplus property. Thank you. Do we have a move to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Excellent. All right. Mr. Holcomb? Aye. Ms. Mosteller? Aye. Ms. Hessel? Aye. Mr. Jordan? Aye. 
Mr. Troutman? Aye. Vice Chair Sheeler? Aye. Motion passes 6-0. Okay. Other matters for consideration? Yes, so um, item A is consideration of approval of second reading of changes to policy 1-6.8 for citizen participation. So we brought first reading to you in October for this one, and this is the change that we're making to your policy based on um, information that um, we received and discussed when we met um, with the VSBA up in Charlottesville in September. So this does um, allow me, in response to a public comment they may come before the board, to respond by letter or to actually meet with the people that came and spoke um, with you because oftentimes sitting in person is much, um, a much better way to communicate if there are concerns. So um, with that, I recommend approval of this change to policy 1-8 for citizen participation. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Parrish. Do we have a motion to approve the second reading of changes about citizen participation? So move. Jeremy? Second. Uh, <laughs> Questions? Discussion? Comments? Anyone? No? Mr. Holcomb? Aye. Ms. Mosteller? Aye. Ms. Hessel? Aye. Mr. Jordan? Aye. Mr. Troutman? Aye. Vice Chair Sheeler? Aye. Motion passes 6-0. Uh, so we have consideration of approval of the first reading of changes of policy 7-3.4 on notice of suspensions and um, expulsions. Yeah. Yes, I'm bringing this to you now because um, the General Assembly um, passed legislation that limited the length of um, suspensions for students, um, one which we did put in our handbook, um, student handbook last year, so we were able to get that in there before you all approved that handbook. So one of the changes um, changes how many days currently we could suspend um, students <coughs> who are in preschool through grade three, limiting it to three days. And then the long-term um, suspension was changed to limit it to a 45 school day period um, for a long-term suspension. What um, the law did allow was for the Virginia Department of Education to um, create a definition for aggravating circumstances because if there are aggravating circumstances, this can allow um, us to extend a short-term suspension for um, grades K through three, but also would allow us to extend a 45-day um, long-term suspension for um, in any grades. So what you see in this policy is the change in code as in terms of the limitations, but also what we've now put in here are the definition definitions for aggravating circumstances because we just those just came from DOE. They had to have the time to actually draft those. So in your hand in our handbook next year, we'll get that description in there, but we felt it was important um, to add that into your policy. So um, if we do have questions, I do want to highlight that in the suspensions of students in grades K through three, um, that is not something you see very often, certainly in our school division, but um, we do want to make sure that we have what is in Virginia code in your policy right now. So we're bringing this to you for first reading and then um, we'll bring it to you hopefully for second reading next month. Thank you, Dr. Parrish. Do we have a motion to move this policy change to a second reading of changes? So moved. Second. Questions, discussion, comments, anyone? Is there anything in the policy update that's not part of the Virginia Department of Education recommendations and regulations? No, in terms of that description for aggravating circumstances, no. And this is a little more detailed than we used to have in your policy, but because became so detailed um, and talking to our board attorney, it made sense for us to actually put policy. So it is pretty much a verbatim of the Department of Education. Yes, exactly for the um, for the aggravating circumstances and then verbatim from code for the part that describes what you can Any other questions or comments? Primers? Mr. Holcomb? Aye. Ms. Mosteller? Aye. Ms. Hessel? Aye. Mr. Jordan? Aye. Mr. Troutman? Aye. Vice Chair Sheeler? Aye. Motion passes 6-0. Okay, and consideration of approval of a 2018-2019 <coughs> calendar adjustment. Dr. Parrish? Yes. As you know, um, we missed five days of school and haven't even gotten to winter yet. Um, so we were able to use our two of our inclement weather days um, to cover two of those days. Four of those days, obviously, for um, 
when we were closed because of the evacuation order for Hurricane Florence, one when we had no power anywhere, pretty much in the city, um, <laughs> for uh, Michael for that Friday. Um, we were able to um, make another day into an early dismissal day. That was the um, election day that all school divisions are typically because we don't poll in our buildings, we could add that in. And then we made another half day in December into a full day. So we still have day five to address. And by addressing the fifth day that we missed, this means if we get into winter weather in January, now what code allows us to do is to have two days missed before we have to make up a day. So um, we felt it was important to take care of the five days before we get into winter. So then when we get into January, um, February, March, at least, you know, if we get to, you know, it'll take two days before we have to make up by code and continue to follow through there. Um, we did um, take a look again at the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, again, dug into the data. And in all honesty, before we started having the Wednesday off before Thanksgiving, our attendance was um, pretty atrocious that day. There were years when a quarter of our students were in school, and I know we had staff too because people just need to travel for that holiday. So rather than touching on um, that day, being presented to you tonight is to have students come on December 20th. Right now, December 19th is, um, is the last day. That became a full day. This would make December 20th an early release day. So if families have travel plans, they could certainly leave after school that day. By doing the early release day, we do get a day. So as long as you're in school for that period of time, it counts as a day um, for our school division. We have communicated with staff, and um, we will, obviously, with parents, they have questions. If somebody's bought airline tickets that requires them to fly out the, 19th, the night of the 19th or during the day on the 20th, that certainly we will approve any leave and excuse the absence for any student. So if there are families that have made travel arrangements where they've paid for something, whether it's plane or train or other transportation, we will certainly um, make sure that we work with the families on this. So it does does still mean that students will have from um, the afternoon of the 20th, which is a Thursday, all the way until uh, the Wednesday, um, of, which is the 2nd of January. So still getting close to two weeks of a vacation um, with that. So and I'm hoping we don't have to worry about missing two days and making up one day. But the way it's on, I'm not very optimistic. <laughs> so. With that, I um, recommend approval of this um, calendar just in making Thursday, December 20th as an early release day. Thank you, Dr. Parrish. Uh, do we have a motion to approve this calendar change? Second. Questions, discussion, comments? Okay. Okay. Ms. Reimers? Mr. Holcomb? Aye. Ms. Mosteller? Aye. Ms. Hessel? Aye. Mr. Jordan? Aye. Mr. Troutman? Aye. Vice Chair Sheila? Aye. Motion passes 6-0. All right. Let's move on to communications. Dr. Parrish. Yes. First, I'd like to um, extend a, a hope that everybody enjoyed their holiday. And now we've got another about a month until our, our next break. Um, I do want to follow up with uh, Mrs. Woodruff and point out that we'll really begin to focus on budget development once we get into January. So we'll certainly be updating school board members. And as she indicated, I certainly encourage for the community or, um, and employees to um, provide any input in the, the um, many venues that ways that she talked about us getting that input on the budget. I did also want to thank City Council for the reappropriation um, that they did at their last meeting for. Um, funding so that we can do the vestibules as well as um, the uh, match to the security grant and then a small portion of it will go to technology funding. It just shows the good relationship that you have with City Council that they trust us to reappropriate that money back um, to spend on meaningful projects and we also that way are supporting the safety committee that met last spring um, that actually was um, set up by City Council and then we had members of our staff join as well. So um, it's good that we were able to support what they, they had as an initiative for the school division in terms of safety. Comments for this evening. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Parrish. Uh, Mr. Smith. <clears throat> Thank you. Our first school board report comes from the primary school and Ms. Grisco. Because some primary school students have been quite busy since the last school board meeting. 
students and staff dressed as their favorite storybook characters to kick off the PTO Readathon fundraiser. Students read over 22,000 minutes, raising over $12,000. Students also celebrated their golden bulls earned for the first quarter by voting on special activities like manipulative centers, extra recess, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, extra recess, or a craftivity. Students earned golden bulls as a class for following school-wide expectations. Pocosin Primary welcomed family, friends, and special guests for Thanksgiving lunches. Families enjoyed time together, along with a delicious Thanksgiving meal prepared by our cafeteria staff. <clears throat> the PTO welcomed families to the family movie night on November 16th, closing out a successful readathon with raffle prizes, pizza, and a family movie in the gym. Our students and staff are now 50 days smarter with our 50th day of school occurring on Monday, November 19th. Students and staff dressed in their best 1950s outfits for the day. Our kindergarten classes participated in their Thanksgiving feast on November 20th with all kindergarten students enjoying Thanksgiving snacks together. We look forward to honoring our November bucket filler students who have exhibited positive behavior at our monthly bucket filler breakfast tomorrow morning. Thank you for your support of the primary school. The next report comes for the, from the elementary school and Dr. Wood. <clears throat> on November 9th, Pocosin Elementary School hosted a breakfast for the students and their family members who are veterans, active, or retired military. The high school band played the national anthem, PES students spoke about what Veterans Day means to them, and several third grade classes sang a patriotic song. Even though there was rain and the program could not be held around the flagpole, over 150 students and their family members were able to celebrate Veterans Day together. On November 16th, Thanksgiving lunch prepared by the PES cafeteria staff was served to students and their families. The food was delicious and a great time was had by all. The first quarter awards assembly was held on November 19th to honor A honor roll, B honor roll, most improved, and Bulls Don't Bully awards for students in grades third through fifth. It was a it was great to see so many family members out to support the students' hard work. The next report comes from the middle school and Mrs. Bunting. Pocosin Middle School celebrated National Kindness Week beginning on November 12th. With support from our Bull Island ambassadors, PMS joined schools across the country to celebrate and encourage choosing to be kind. The week's activities included collecting change for the United Way charities, creating a Caught Being Kind bulletin board, and a tree of thanks in the cafeteria for students to display their gratitude. We closed out the week with High Five Friday. Each day of Kindness Week, students were greeted at the bus and parent drop-off with welcome signs and friendly greetings from staff and students. The character trait that All In is highlighting for second quarter is citizenship. Throughout the quarter, PMS will highlight and promote positive citizenship through daily quotes about citizenship <coughs> on the morning announcements, issuing golden tickets to students demonstrating good citizenship, and surprise all-in challenges with a the citizenship theme. On November 16th, 274 students were recognized for making the honor roll for first quarter. Students received a bumper sticker, certificate, and frozen treat to recognize their academic excellence. Students in all grade levels have been encouraged, have been engaged in hands-on learning. In sixth grade classes, students conducted consumer experiments to determine the most effective products on the market, followed by the making of a commercial to share their findings with the public. Seventh grade students have been learning how to conduct photo analysis through social studies classes using 19th and early 20th century photos from the Library of Congress on immigration and the growth of cities. Eighth grade students have been busy in science classes with cooking food to observe the chemical and physical changes that occur during the cooking process. Students presented their findings to help educate others on this process. The next Pocosin Middle School dance is this Friday, November 30th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. This dance is sponsored by the PMS Library. The final report comes from the high school and Dr. Syak. Pocosin High School successfully concluded the first quarter and is charging full speed ahead into the second quarter. Over the last month, we hosted students from the Czech Republic who shared their culture with our school community. Additionally, we hosted visitors from NASA who kicked off this year's Hunch program. With our students, our hard at work, which our students are hard at work designing their prototypes. 
Our Islanders also participated in a very successful STEM day with a host of dynamic activities, including a visit from a former astronaut and the interactive STEM trailer from Newport News Shipbuilding. In our driver's education, Arrive Alive program, students conducted numerous activities throughout the school to bring awareness to seatbelt safety, including having students pledge to buckle up each time they got into a vehicle. Students in AP US history toured numerous monuments in Washington, DC, alongside several military veterans for the continuation of the Pocosum Veterans Project. CTE students toured an architecture firm investigated strategies for improving acoustics at Pocosin Elementary, and explored the marketing efforts behind the Disney Corporation. Collaborating with PPS, our student athletes read to students at the primary school in conjunction with the Read Aloud to a Child Week. Our student athletes provided much to cheer about this past month with outstanding postseason play across the spectrum of fall sports, including making it to the state finals in both field hockey and volleyball. In conjunction with our ongoing bullying awareness campaign, students and faculty participated with students from across the peninsula in Diversity Dialogue Day at Hampton University, aimed at fostering inclusive communities in our schools. Additionally, all PHS students participated in the United Way's <coughs> Kindness Week, which included a bullseye lesson highlighting bullying prevention efforts, a school-wide food, food and toiletry drive, and notes of support to students returning to school in areas hit by hurricanes earlier this fall. In the coming month, the PHS band and choral departments will perform their winter concerts. Winter sports will get underway, and our students and faculty will continue to engage in meaningful learning experiences. Be sure to check our website for the latest accomplishments of our students and events within our school community. This concludes my report. Thank you very much. Mr. Holcomb? Thank you, Madam Chairperson and Mr. Pappas. Thank you for helping me get the title right because I was really stressing over that. Ms. or Madam, I didn't know I was going to go, so thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, also, just uh, like to really thank the coaches and the uh, uh, parents, really, for the uh, sports teams this fall. We've just done really well. I don't want to list them because I'll get in trouble, but that, of course, we honored the golf team and the field hockey team, but we've just done really well. <coughs> Looking forward to seeing how the spring goes for us uh, in light of what's happened so far. And now I, I have um, news. My neighborhood's famous in Pocosin because I live by Ms. Japazi. So <laughs> the VA coach of the year, that's impressive, and I really appreciate all her work. I told her tonight I, wouldn't, I didn't realize she started coaching field hockey at the age of four. So I, I'm really <laughs> happy that she's done so well. And thank, you, thank her for all her work in, in, the, in the city. Ms. Uh, yes, I'd like to thank City Council for their continued support of our schools, their joint focus on safety. Our school safety is greatly appreciated. Um, also, congratulate the fall athletes and hope they continue the academic and athletic success throughout the rest of the year. Um, and just also say that I'm happy to see that we're continuing to focus on kindness in our schools and that it didn't just end um, at the conclusion. So, thank you and keep up the good work. I agree with that completely. Um, I love the climate of kindness. I think it's phenomenal and I love what Reed said, 10, 10 acts of kindness a day. And that's definitely something to aspire to. Um, just wanted to, um, you know, say how how well uh, STEM night was. Um, it was a terrific event. My first grader went to the event um, and uh, still talks about that night regularly. And in a day and age where science and math are so vital to so many uh, careers, um, it brings interest to kids at a young, young age. So it's it's... It's fantastic that we've kind of gravitated to that. One of my favorite pictures, though, of the night was uh, the Instagram picture of Dr. Parrish <laughs> and her hair. Um, not, not that she was having a bad hair day, but because she... You know, <laughs> so if you haven't seen that picture... Yeah, um, I, I took one for the team. It is out. So <laughs> so. Thank you so much. Echo what everybody else has said, uh, and also add to Dr. Fox, congratulations on the instructional updates and to the principals that are in the room. Uh, moving up the scores on SAT starts at you know primary school all the way up, so it is a uh, you know beginning to end kind of story. So the success of the AP courses and the amount of savings that you save parents for college education expenses, uh, just the <laughs> highlight of our school. And so just thank you for all you're doing and and for. Uh, the day-to-day -day activities and, and also for the primary and elementary school Thanksgiving was really great job managing all those parents <laughs> <laughs>
Well, uh, the school board gets a weekly report from uh, Dr. Parrish, and she shared us, with us a story that was a great example of kindness. It came from a letter sent by a parent of a student named Allie from Madison County, whose team lost to our volleyball players in a run-up game to the state finals. She wrote that her daughter was very upset at the, at the way the game had gone, um, but felt so much better when Chloe Dupree took her aside because Chloe told her she was so impressed with her playing and with the whole Madison County team. That act of kindness will last well past any memory of the game. Uh, in another story in the Daily Press, our former school board chair, Stephen Cast, who is president and CEO of the United Way of the Virginia Peninsula, said the power of kindness is both magical and transformative. It is one of the most impactful things we will ever do in this community. Kindness uh, United is uh, an initiative that he has launched uh, with uh, United Way to make the peninsula a kinder, more generous, and compassionate place to live and work. Our students are doing a great job to send this message with essays on kindness and buckets to collect donations and letters written to local nursing homes. We can be very proud of our Pocosin students. Uh, I guess let's move on. Do we have any other material for the board to review? No, other than you do have a copy from Mrs. Woodruff of the budget calendar for this year um, at your spot on the dais. Thank you. Uh, so we're moving into a work session where we're going to be talking about instructional data, the CIP, and new matters by the board. So we stand adjourned.